Am I the idiot for leaving my husband at home while I spend the week at my brother's because of how he buys the groceries? I've been in a committed relationship with my husband for 17 years, and overall, things have been great. We've had a few rough patches, but what's important to note is that while he earns more than me and is considered the main provider, I have a substantial trust fund that ensures we're financially stable. I work part-time as a teacher while attending university, earning less than him, and most of my income goes towards tuition. Our household income exceeds $200,000 annually, while the average in our area is below $50,000. One ongoing issue we have is my husband's frugality. He likes to control my spending and have the final say on how he uses his earnings. It's worth mentioning that I've never used any of his income and have no intention to do so. However, the main point of contention between us is his frequent visits to food banks. Despite having more than enough food at home, he insists on going to food banks to save money. He intentionally looks disheveled and uses our beat-up car to blend in, even though he's never experienced food scarcity. I've explained to him the need for food donations in our community, even showing him social media posts from local food banks, but he remains indifferent. I suggested he volunteer or donate to gain first-hand experience, but he refuses. The unfortunate part is that since we're never short on food, most of what he brings home ends up getting thrown away. Today, I discovered our fridge filled with fresh produce and meat that clearly didn't come from our regular grocery store. When I confronted him, he admitted to going to a food bank after seeing a Facebook post about a donation of fresh food. People on social media were already asking if any was left, and there wasn't. I showed him these comments, but he brushed them off, claiming people should have gone earlier. Exhausted by the situation, I packed a bag and went to stay with my brother for the weekend, asking for space to think things over. My husband accuses me of overreacting, being vindictive, and threatens to go back to the food banks regardless of my feelings. His family is also messaging me, calling me an asshole and urging me to stop interfering with his choices. I turned off my phone, but now they're bombarding my brother with messages. Thankfully, he supports my decision and ignores them. All I want is to enjoy the rest of my week without being angry at my husband. Yes, I could let this go and not scold him, but the food he takes could have gone to people who truly need it. I'm not leaving my husband, but I need a few days away to gain some clarity. Am I wrong for wanting this space? Comment 1. Some rich people would do this not out of a poverty or trauma mindset but out of a wealth hoarding mindset. They don't tip at restaurants and and they always want a bargain. They see their frugality as the virtue that brings them wealth and often perceive poor people as wasteful and therefore deserving of their poverty. If his family is like this, too, they probably think taking from a food pantry is resourceful in an Ayn Randian way where self-interest is the only rational way to live. Comment 2. Oh yes, that could be true, especially his comment about how the real poor people didn't get to the food fast enough. I didn't realize this when I made my original comment, but I think OP said her husband grew up wealthy. Now for the next story. Am I the idiot for leaving a family vacation early because my husband and I were expected to sleep in different beds? For my FIL's 50AM birthday this year, my MIL 57F planned a week-long trip with their four children, edit, my husband is the second oldest, and their respective partners. They rented out a nice house near the beach and the cost for the Airbnb was split equally between the attending couples. My husband, 31M, and I, 29M, drove down there this week and when we arrived in our, edit, pre-assigned room, we were surprised to find two single beds. At first, we shrugged it off and figured we could simply push them against each other, but we quickly found out that the headboards of the beds were drilled to the wall. Edit, the headboards were attached to both the wall and the bed frame. I assume it's to prevent renters from moving the beds and possibly damaging the flooring etc. I asked my MIL why she had chosen a house that didn't have enough double beds to hold all of the couples that were invited, and she told me to stop making a fuss because it wasn't that big of a deal. I then asked why she hadn't mentioned it beforehand and she rolled her eyes at me, saying that I was overdramatic, a walking stereotype, and that me not clinging to her son for a little while might be for the best. Considering she has made some borderline homophobic comments in the past, she claims they're jokes. I was quite uncomfortable and based on her remarks, I felt like she had given the room with the single beds to the only gay couple on purpose. 
I said that if it wasn't that big of a deal, surely she and her husband would be happy to switch rooms with us, but she once again told me that I should quit making a fuss and walked away from the conversation. Afterwards, my husband tried talking to his mother but he wasn't any more successful than I had been and at this point, I was reaching my breaking point, so I asked my husband if he'd like to spend our vacation at a hotel, as we had both taken the week off work anyway. He agreed and we booked us a room at a hotel a few towns away. My MIL has accused us of ruining her husband's birthday and dividing the family, because two of my husband's siblings support our decision. My in-laws and the last sibling have been texting me, calling me in. Ah. For turning my husband against his family and egoistically manipulating the vacation. Comment 1. There is a somewhat common stereotype that gay people are just all over each other all the time. It also feeds into the bullshit that is assuming gay people are trying to groom children constantly. It basically boils down to the homophobic assumption that if you are gay you are automatically a deviant with no control. Comment 2. Please keep in mind that I personally don't think this way. Now that that's out of the way, while reading it, my mind immediately went to the stereotype that in gay slash lesbian relationships, there must still be a traditional man role and woman role at play. Like she's insinuating that her son is the man in the marriage and the OP is feminine, more emotional, a drama queen, etc. Belittling and minimizing his very reasonable misgivings about the sleeping arrangements is putting it back on the OP for being overdramatic, clingy, and a walking stereotype. In other words, she's telling him to stop being a sissy or man up, that it's not a big deal in reality. In her narrative, she is blameless, and the OP is just styring up unnecessary discord while her son is being led astray. She probably feels this way to rationalize that her son isn't the woman in the relationship, so that makes him less gay, and her homophobic little head doesn't hurt as much. Now for the next story. Am I the idiot for not giving my husband a single hour off on Father's Day? My husband, 36M, and I, 33F, have been married for 8 years and have 3 kids, 5, 3, and a 1-month-old infant. I am currently still recovering from my planned C-section and it is taking a lot longer than I had hoped. I am not on bed rest, but pretty darn close. Unless it's to go to the bathroom or changing or feeding my baby, I'm pretty much always sitting or laying down. I don't like it, but it's what my body needs to heal right now. Both my husband and I are still on maternity slash paternity leave. Obviously, that means that pretty much every other aspect of our lives falls on my husband right now. He, been doing a great job of taking care of the older kids, and making sure everything in our lives is running as smoothly as it can given our circumstances. He's also great about taking care of the baby and giving me breaks as much as he can. But I can tell it's starting to wear on him mentally and physically. Neither of us is sleeping well and I swear he looks like he's lost more weight than I have since the baby came. Due to me being pretty much immobile, I can't really go out of the house to do anything without assistance. So I wasn't able to plan anything really fun for Father's Day. I did help the older kids make him cards and ordered him some nice steaks to cook though. I felt bad because for Mother's Day he bought me a 6-hour pregnancy spa treatment and took the older kids out of the house all day so I could have peace. But on the morning of Father's Day, I was feeling worse than usual as I had to strain myself the day before to pick up something off the floor and I aggravated my incision, so, I was laid up all day. Again, this meant my husband had to do literally everything that day. By the time he got the older kids to bed, I could tell he was irritated and upset. I told him to try and relax for a bit, but then the baby started fussing and he jumped up off the couch, grabbed a pillow, and screamed into it. I tried to calm him down, but he just kept freaking out about how he's at his wit's end and he needs a break, and that I couldn't even find a way to give him a single hour of quiet on Father's Day. I started crying and he just looked at me and walked away to take care of the baby without saying anything. After he took care of the baby he came back to me and apologized. But he said he needs a break and he's going to talk to family about taking the older kids for a week or so and that he's just disappointed that his father's day was spent running around doing everything for everyone else. He didn't even get to cook his steaks, he ate cold pizza for dinner. I asked him what I was supposed to do because it's not like I can move or leave the house, and he said I could have looked into a sitter for the kids or made them sit with me and watch a movie for an hour, so he could have just a sliver of time for himself. 
he said he feels like his needs are at the bottom of the list and he just wanted to feel like he matters for one day. Comment 1. Why is it people never think of common sense solutions? So... I'm a mobile and Father's Day is coming up. But no I'm not gonna call any friend or family to take the kids or help me out that day so my husband can actually enjoy his day. And he's gonna have to cook his own dinner. No I didn't call a restaurant for takeout, why would I? So? Many conflicts can be fixed if people would just use their brains. YTA and please call some people to come over so your husband can have a break. It sounds like he desperately needs it. Comment 2. Because Father's Day is 20th on the list of most celebrated holidays. Mother's Day is second. That's the whole story right there. Editing to be clear. I'm not saying dads deserve to be number two, or even number three. I'm not saying your random redditor reading this, particular dad was a good dad or as nice as your mom. I am saying this op's husband is kicking ass at being an equal partner and didn't even get 20th place treatment.